The same thing happens. You see, I know a person before 9-11, the person was a millionaire with millions of dollars in stocks before 9-11. And when 9-11 happened, the entire fortune was wiped out. In one night, the stocks fell to such a low level that the, the fortunes are simply wiped out. And this person, he went to sleep and the mind level happened early in the morning. By afternoon he understood what is going on and the next day morning he realized what happened. The stock is gone and uh, he became a different person. Now he is not the same person. So the personality in the course, very dramatic changes. Whereas Individual is the same. All through these variations of personality, the individual, the innermost sense of being, which is the I am, that is just the same. As a child, as a youth, as a middle-aged person, as an old man, as a healthy person, as a sick person, I am is the same. Ego is never the same. You see the difference now? Therefore, we are not saying that the ego is Brahma. We say that the ego is a shadow. It is not real. It is a shadow. So, a shadow cannot be the same as the truth. The shadow is of course connected to the truth. It is connected to the reality. Because without reality you cannot have a shadow. In that sense. Otherwise, uh, the shadow cannot be the same as the satyam, the truth. Therefore, jivaha means not that egoic entity, ever changeful, always in the grip of desires and fears. So, that is not the, that is not Brahma. You leave that alone, you drop it, and abide as pure I am. The pure I amness, though it's, it appears as limited, etc., limited in space time, that I amness is the reflection of Brahman in the body mind, what we call Chidabhasa. And that jiva, that individual, it is indeed called individual because it is indivisible. It is not divided from the reality. It is indivisible with reference to reality. And that's why it is called individual. And uh, jiva, jiva word, jiva pranadharane means uh, holding, holding the life. So holding on to the life. Therefore that is the word jiva. It is not the ego. So that the jiva the life principle, the vital force that pervades this body is no different from the universal truth, which is Brahman. Because this individual life, Jiva, originates from that, and therefore it is no different from that. Jivo Brahmaiva. So, na aparaha, it is not the other. You see, we want the we are, we are always looking for truth. We want the truth in life. And we want the love in life. We want to discover love. Then we want to know, the, we want the, the intelligence, the truth. Yeah. So, you look for truth and love all the time. You may continue to look for eternity, for truth and love elsewhere. You will never get it. So, you implore the other man to give you love or to give you the truth. You will not be fulfilled because the other man cannot give you love. You have to discover love in yourself. And uh, you may implore the other person for an eternity. That is what people do. I have done so much service to you. You have not reciprocated. So, I love you but you do not love me. So this is how they are employing man or human 
or to give love or to, to get love from the other. It will never be fulfilled. The other person, first of all, will be put off. Therefore, what is this schedule? He is after me. I have to give love to him. What should I do now? I am already giving love to him. What more can I do? That is what the person thinks in the mind. The person may say it also. The person says that we will be deeply hurt. So we, should, we seek love. And then truth. We are seeking truth everywhere. So for an eternity you may seek. And you may implore God and man for truth and love. You worship God for love, for joy, for happiness, which is love. And you worship God for truth. Oh God, give me the truth. So this God who is external to you cannot give you truth and love. So the law is you must begin in yourself. You must begin with yourself. This is the law. And so for truth you begin with yourself because you take yourself to be the ego, stop that, be the ayam, and then uh, that ayam is the window to the truth. And so you will discover the truth in the window of ayam. As you abide as ayam, you will discover the truth. You will not discover the truth in the libraries and in the books and in uh, other people's uh, things. Or elsewhere. And then in that ayam, you will discover the love infinite. And your search will come to an end in Ayam. And what about the world we have seen? What you call world, first realize that what you call world is your world. First you have to realize that. What you call world is your world. The world is all the way subjective. So there is nothing like objective or any such thing. It is like your dream. What you call dream is your dream. Similarly, what you call world is your world. And first realize that. It's because there may be some areas of overlap, like wife and husband. The husband's world is different. Wife's world is different. Man's world is different. Woman's world is different. Man can never understand the woman's world. That's why man should have an open mind and appreciate that the woman's world I cannot understand and in love give her freedom. Because the woman's world a man can never understand. You see, I talk so much about necklace and all that. I am, I am a bit guilty about it myself because the value of necklace, the importance of putting the necklace in the neck, as a man I can never, never know that. Only a woman can appreciate it. So in spite of saying so much well on that, still a woman will know what it is. And that's why we have to respect that also. We should not uh, apply the same standard for man and woman. Anyway, the point is, uh, what you call the world is your world, first. Second, it is a reflection of your own mind. It's a projection of your own mind. Nothing more than that. And uh, therefore, stop finding fault with, your, with the world. If you find any problem with the world, the problem is in you. If you find the world is uh, unhappy, that means you are unhappy. That's why the world is unhappy. So, anyway, so first attend to yourself. Attend to yourself. Set yourself right. Mentally and emotionally. You set yourself right. You purify your emotions and you set, uh, uh, mentally means knowledge device. You understand things correctly. Don't uh, uh, don't carry some silly notions in the uh, imagining them to be the truth. So, uh, this, when you do that, and uh, then uh, you search for the truth and love in yourself, and when you discover the truth and love in yourself, that is the Brahman, and that Brahman you will discover 
you are is no different from uh, yourself. You, you are that truth and love, but you are calling Brahma. Well, you are that truth and love. Uh, therefore, uh, this is how one has to understand. There is no real division between Jiva and Ishvara. Like uh, water and its bubbles are one. Water and its bubbles are not different. Water and its bubbles are one. Similarly, Jiva and Ishvara are one in a sense. So, um, it is the Maya ignorance which makes you feel yourself separate from the reality called Brahman. In Ramayana, Rama walks in the front, Sita in the middle, and Lakshmana is behind. Lakshmana loves Rama, Jiva loves Ishvara. Lakshmana wants to be looking at Rama all the time. Lakshmana wants to be uh, by the side of Rama all the time. But Sita is always in the middle, blocking his vision. And so he cannot look at Rama all the time because Sita stands in the middle. And uh, similarly, Lakshmana is the Jiva, Rama is the Brahma, and Sita is the Maya. And therefore, between you and the Brahma, <laughs> Sita, the Maya is standing. And when you overcome Sita, the Maya, you will gain uh, Brahma. So the separation will be over. This is the Jiva Brahma Yuga Naparaha. See, when Swami Vivekananda presented uh, this thing very beautifully. You see, uh, what you call God, Brahma is God, you know. What you call God is, uh, is always uh, the expanse of what you are already. Like for example, what are you? You are a conscious being. What is God? Conscious or unconscious or insentient? God is also conscious being. So, you are jnana, you are jnana, you are conscious being, and God is also jnana. Only thing is, you are small and God is big. That is all you have to say. That is, it is a small big thing only you have to say to maintain a difference between Jiva and Ishwara. So, Jiva is Jnana, Ishwara is Jnana. See, whether Ishwara is Jnana or not, is always a, a point of contention. So, Ishwara is the origin of this entire creation. That is what Ishwara is. That origin, is it sentient or insentient? We say, Vedantins, it is sentient. That's why Jnanam Brahma. Whereas Sankhya says it is insentient. Kapila Maharshi said it is insentient. It is a jadam pradhanam, he said. So, whether God is sentient or insentient is a point of contention. Whether you are sentient or insentient is not a point of contention. Right? It is, it is, a, it is, it is not a point to be discussed at all. You are sentient. There is no doubt about it. Now we have to settle for a sentient God or an insentient God. If you go for an insentient God, you are a Sankhya. In modern times, our cosmologists who, who say the world has originated from Big Bang, they are kind of a, a Sankhyas. Big Bang is an insentient it is. Therefore, the point that I am making is, whether God is sentient or not, you can argue for the ages, but whether you are sentient or not is not a point of argument. But let us say, I am sentient and God is also sentient. Then what is the difference? I am small, God is big. Then, uh, you see, I have knowledge that is sentience only, but my knowledge is small. God has a lot of knowledge. Aham Alpadnyaha, Ishvadaha, Sarvadnyaha. 
बट द पॉइंट इज बोथ आर ज्ञान यू आर ज्ञान एंड ईश्वर इज ऑल्सो ज्ञान देन मैन यू हैव यू आर शक्तिमान यू हैव सम शक्ति एंड ईश्वर ऑल्सो हैज शक्ति बट योर शक्ति इज स्मॉल ईश्वर से शक्ति इज बिग so this is how we create an ideal an utopia we create what are the elements of the utopia the elements which are there in you they are the elements of the utopia you are shaktiman so utopia is also shaktiman you are knowledge utopia is also knowledge You are sentience. Utopia is also sentience. So this is therefore in essence the utopia which you are worshiping as God is not different from you. In essence, it is not different. Only you have to say in size you are. It is different. That is all you have to say. In size, it is different. So. This size, the volume, or the quantity, small, big, the smallness, bigness, can it create a real difference? Of course, it makes an apparent difference, obvious, but can it make a real difference? So I tell you, it cannot, because the smallness, bigness itself is a relative thing. It is only with reference to a category called the space. There is a thing called smallness, bigness. If you understand that the space and time are mental categories, they are not part of the reality. They are mental categories. Means when there is thought process, there is space and time. When there is no thought process, you are. Without thought process, you are. But space time are not. Therefore, the space time. Are the uh, parameters of the thought process, and uh, therefore they are not real. They are transient, and therefore they cannot cause any real difference. Therefore, the human being and the utopia he worships in the name of God are one and the same. And that's why, even while you are worshiping God, unconsciously. You are worshiping your own hidden self. That is what you are worshiping. Your own hidden self. And that, when you do not understand yourself as a jiva, even uh, understanding oneself as jiva is a big step because you have already arrived at the window to the truth. But you take yourself the egoic entity, uh, which is constructed by the desires and fears. So now you are the ego, worshiping God. Then the God becomes anthropomorphic God. Means the God is now shaped by your desires and fears. The construct of the ego shapes the God. So. That's why when you want to pass exam, you worship Saraswati. When you purchase a lottery ticket or making money uh, in business, you worship Lakshmi. And when you are afraid, you worship Hanuman. And when you are in love, you worship uh, the God of Love. Something like that. So that God becomes anthropomorphic, and you are the ego filled with desires. So, therefore, consciously or unconsciously, man is worshiping his own his own hidden self as the God. This is how Swami Vivekananda presents uh, uh, the oneness of Jiva and Brahma. Jiva Brahmaiva Naparaha. So Jiva is like a Sri Ramakrishna's salt dal example is there. This salt dal example come, comes from Brahmaranya uh, Upanishad. 
very interesting example. In Rodani Yogopanishad, um, there, there is a description called Thilya Bhava. That is the description. Thilya Bhava means uh, how he presents is. Uh, uh, this uh, is talked about by Sri Ramakrishna also uh, from the whole uh, the individual separates. And the individual goes back and medjas in the whole. Both ways it is described. You see, you just imagine yourself in the middle of a, an ocean. Means all around there is only ocean. Ocean and nothing else. That is all there is. Now you see an iceberg, a, a, a mass of ice, or a piece of ice, a boulder of ice. Now this iceberg appears to be separate from the ocean. This is Sri Ramakrishna Siddhartha. Sitting in Bengal, in Calcutta, he came out with these examples very interesting. He must have had some idea of an iceberg. So, the iceberg appears to be different, but it is never different. It's only an appearance. It is the same as ocean, but appears different from the ocean. Jiva is like that. It is one infinite undivided consciousness. But as the consciousness reflects in a given body mind, it is taken to be limited by the parameters of the body mind. And therefore, as you superimpose those limitations, it emerges as a jiva, as so different from the whole. In the other direction, like the iceberg marries, then it is one with the ocean, the division is gone. Similarly, uh, Sri Ramakrishna gave another example of a salt doll. This salt doll is a the iceberg kind of thing only. So, the doll made of salt, the salt coming from the sea, sea salt, don't refine and all that, example, you know. So, the sea salt, you see, sea salt is nothing but a condensed form of sea water. Sea water condenses, becomes sea salt. That's why there is still a lot of water in that sea salt. It is still wet. This is sea salt is uh, put together into the form of a doll. And this doll wants to discover the depth of the ocean. And so it, it dives into the ocean to find the depth of the ocean. Now, will it come back and report to the depth to you? No. It won't come back and report to the depth. In fact, as it dives into the ocean, it merges in the ocean. Because, though it appears to be different from the ocean, it is never nearly different from the ocean. Because, you know, if it is different, then it cannot merge. If it is different, it cannot merge. That's why this is Vaita people's moksha. It's a very funny moksha. It is like there. You go to heaven. And Indra will be sitting at one place and you will be sitting at some other place, like that. This is that kind of moksha it is. You see, once I went uh, uh, to a place to see a Mahatma. This Mahatma, he declared himself, all the people declared, he is a good Mahatma, a uh, great one. People declare that he is God, he is the God incarnate. In India, at any given time you have minimum half a dozen God in the carpets going on. At any given time. Minimum half a dozen. In North, the South, etc. they are dispersed. In Andhra Pradesh we have a God in carpet all the time. I mean in the South India. So I went to see him. But then man, every day thousands of people come to see him. Because in India religion is the mainstream. So thousands of people flock to see him, just to see him, like they go to Tirupati, to see Lord Venkateshwara. They are not going to do anything more than that, just to see him. And similarly, 
In fact, they can't do anything more than that. Because if you want to do anything more, you need a lot of money and a lot of political support also. Political recommendation, etc. You need, if you want to do a puja to a Krishna Swami, you cannot go and do puja like that. They will throw you out. So you need a, a minister's recommendation and you have to spend a lot of money. So, they throw rich and powerful God. The God of rich and powerful. Whatever. So, it can be like that. Um, but I think that somehow it is made like that. And I will even not want people to go. And they just watch, see God for ten seconds and come on. The same way they go to see this uh, Mahatma who is taken as God. I am so meant just to see him. Because what is wrong with it? Bhavana, just to see him. He sees us or not, we see him. That matters to Swami only. So we see him. So I went. There was a gentleman who stays there. He invited me. And so I have a Viksha is taken. Otherwise you have to struggle for Viksha also. So Viksha is taken there. And so I finished a bath and had some good breakfast. He told you take some good breakfast because you have to push, pull and all those things. So I went there. And now I went with the recommendation. Because somebody telephoned someone there. The Swami is coming. Please help him to see the God. So the Mahatma is the God now. So the Mahatma is likely to come. Never knows. He may be, he may skip also. And there are any number of occasions that he skips the appearance. You know why? He is sick. <laughs> Can you believe it? He is sick. He got paralysis stroke. And they put him in a chair and take her on. Earlier he used to walk. People used to have a darshan. Now he doesn't, cannot walk anymore. And so they put him in a chair, wheelchair. And somebody, a very close devotee, pulls him around, pushes him around. And people have darshan still. And even that he skips occasionally. So it all depends upon the fortune of the devotees of that day. So he comes at six and the cues are formed from 3.30 onwards. And I was asked to report to the person at three. I went near a gate and stand outside the gate. And then after 3.15 somebody appeared. What do you want? I said, I wanted to have a word with that person. Okay, you stay there. And I remained outside the gate. There are so many other people. And then uh, slowly within another half an hour this message was sent to him. And he received already a phone call. And therefore he said, yeah, yeah, I know, I, I got a phone call. I will ask my that. He came out at 4.30 and he looked at me. You are this one? Yes, I am this one. I was standing there for an hour in hot sun. And I, I am this Swami. I wanted to see, come what me. So, 4.30. He said, okay, come inside. He allowed me to come inside. Uh, hundreds of people are left outside. I am allowed to come inside. And then he showed me a place. You sit there. I asked him, how long I have to sit? You have to sit two hours. Some bathroom and sit there. He showed the just the bathroom. And uh, so, having settled with these points, I sat. Daiva Darshana. <laughs> really? I always remember this. And now I sat there. Uh, and uh, you cannot move one inch forward. Now the time has stopped. Now God is coming. Okay. So all this waiting is not a waste. Sometimes at six, they wait for another fifteen, twenty minutes. And then somebody comes and declares, today God is not giving darshan. So we will go home. Indian, the patience and the endurance Indians have that keeps them in good stead, I tell you. <laughs> Elsewhere you have a revolution, but not in any Anyway, so he is coming that day, he came out, and so they are pushing him in the wheelchair. 
and uh, he went i looked at him he did not even look at me i looked at him darshan is over and uh, this is cues formation is there there are various layers of cues all are sitting on it so some people sit two feet close to him he comes two feet close to him then some people sit five feet close another layer i was sitting 10 feet close layer that is my layer and there are people sitting 20 feet 40 feet 40 feet like that there are at least i counted as six to seven tiers tier of tier tier six to seven tiers of devotees are there and the darshan also will be proportionately according to that only no camera is allowed no article is allowed you know why the security issues in india the, the security is a problem everywhere because uh, there are so many terrorist sleeper cells so security is always a they can strike any time they are not striking because they are busy other parts <laughs> they are busy with other things that's why they are not they are the same to say this so they are not they are tired of these strikes because nothing happens nobody cares for their strike also so they are tired of the themselves and so on they keep quiet and suddenly they wake up and shake their head and okay, have to strike okay go to strike <laughs> that is india we have solved this terrorist problem very effectively without spending one paisa without losing sleep over that America did not do any better than that. I found this method is a better method. Really? And uh, so people, you say everybody has to die. What is the consequence? So then he came and went, and he cannot speak anymore. He cannot speak because voice is strong, the voice is strong. And anyway, later he died. I had my last chance to see him. I saw him later he died. While doing that, then I understood this is the moksha of the Dvaitis. In in Dvaita, the moksha means going to Vaikuntha. This Vaishnava Dvaita. They describe it very elaborately. You go to Vaikuntha. So in Vaikuntha, you will be like me. That I did, you know. Went at 3:30 in the sun and had the darshan at 6:15 or 6:30, just a glimpse of darshan. And then he sat there for a few minutes. Now you cannot see him because the distance is too much. But still you can see some small shape. And then uh, in 30 minutes he is pulled again away. So that is the darshan for that day. In Vaikuntha you will have a similar darshan of Lord Vishnu. That is called moksha. Every day you can have darshan. That is the moksha. If this is the moksha, I am not the one who seeks it. Certainly not, because I don't want the moksha. Because such a painful moksha it is. So we are okay with all that moksha. Yes, <laughs> God. This is my experience. Very personal experience. I told the experience to you. Therefore, if the division is real, it will be like this. Because not only you are the devotee, there are other devotees. No, no, I am the supreme devotee. There are many supreme devotees, and there is always a rush. And then you never get a full glimpse of Vishnu. You will get, get from him or her. And there is always a people who take Vishnu around, and I keep. There are people who stop us. And there are people who cover Vishnu. So between you and Vishnu, there are two layers of people: the people who prevent you moving any forward, and the people who cover Vishnu. So that is all the darshan you can have in Vaikuntha. And do the darshan, go back to your room, and have some food and relax. That is Vaikuntha life. Therefore. If you want moksha, there is only one moksha, and that is jivo brahmi vana praha, like the salt dal merging in the ocean, or even uh, 
the water droplets sitting in the clouds, it is sitting there, separated from the ocean. Now it has to merge in the ocean. That is the only way it has to gain ocean. It cannot gain ocean by remaining at a distance from the ocean. So it has to separate itself from the mass of clouds and it has to crystallize and start to descending and so as it undertakes the journey of descent in, uh, into the ocean and then it falls into the ocean and merges in the ocean. The same way in meditation you dive deep inside you and uh, merge in the Atma which is your self. That is the only moksha. So moksha is a more of a separation than union. So you get separated from the non-self identification. As you identify with the non-self, you become the non-self. And so now you separate yourself from the non-self because the, the identification came from ignorance. Therefore knowledge helps you to separate yourself from the non-self. And as you are separated from the non-self, it is the same as union with the true self. Because you are the true self. There cannot be any particular union or any such thing. You are already united. Therefore, Jiva Brahmaiva Naparaha. The Mahatma gave a definition of a Jiva. Jiva is a Brahman, Brahman only, and a Brahman plus body, mind. That is not enough. Brahman plus body, mind could be a Jiva Mukta. Brahman plus body, mind plus ignorance is equal to jiva. That is the formula. Brahman plus body plus mind plus ignorance is equal to jiva. Now you remove the ignorance. When you remove the ignorance, what happens, you know, body, mind are recognized as shadow. Mind is what? Mind is the ripple in the consciousness. Ripple in consciousness. A ripple is not here. It is a movement only. And the movement stops, there is no ripple. Therefore, consciousness alone remains. So, suppose the ripple is there in water. Now, how many things are there? Water plus a ripple. Two things are there? No, no. Water only is there. Even when the ripple is there, it is water only. Without ripple, it is water only. Ripple doesn't make it a dua. People who doesn't make it do all. It is like you stand before the mirror. Now how many are there? One only. No more add the image. So one plus the image is equal to one, not two. So only ignorance makes it appear two. When you remove the ignorance, body and mind are seen clearly for what they are. They are the shadow. They are not real. So when another Brahman reflects in space-time, the shadow appears as the body-mind. Therefore, body-mind is mithya, unreal. And so Brahman alone remains. So Brahman plus body plus mind plus ignorance is equal to jiva. You remove the ignorance, then you are left with Brahman plus body plus mind. This body plus mind is only an appearance, it is mithya. Therefore, it doesn't make any difference in Brahman. So, is equal to Jiva, which is Brahman. So, Jiva Muktastu Tat Vidvan. Therefore, the difference between Brahman and Jiva is caused by ignorance. In fact, Brahman becomes Jiva by ignorance. And minus the ignorance, Tat Vidvan, one who knows the truth about oneself, Tad with one. He is now liberated from the bondage of samsara. So, um, so he, he is called Jeevan Mukta. One who is liberated even while living. See, this Mukti, Moksha, it cannot happen while a person is alive. This is the dualist philosophy. Because for them, moksha is reaching heaven, 
అలా వైకుంఠ వైకుంఠ దిస్ వైకుంఠ ఇస్ ది పవర్ఫుల్ థింగ్ యూనో వై వైష్ణవ దేర్ ది పవర్ఫుల్ థింగ్స్ దట్స్ వై దట్ ఈస్ ద టాపిక్ ఆఫ్ డిస్కషన్ ఆల్ ది టైమ్ జస్ట్ టు కౌంట్ మేక్ ఐ కంప్లీట్ కౌంటర్ పాత్ యూ మే బ్రింగ్ ఇన్ కైలాస దిస్ కైలాస ఆఫ్ పీపుల్ ఆర్ నాట్ సో స్ట్రాంగ్ వైకుంఠ పీపుల్ ఆర్ వెరీ స్ట్రాంగ్ సో వైకుంఠ ఇస్ ది ఎగ్జాంపుల్ అండ్ దే బికాస్ దే ఆర్ వెరీ పవర్ఫుల్ anyway so this vaikuntha so going to vaikuntha is moksha unless you land in vaikuntha and the immigration formalities are finished till then you are not in vaikuntha because you never know suppose you land and they refuse they refuse to allow you to go inside they entry they refuse to give entry then you will be deported back therefore you land there the formalities of entry officially entering into vaikuntha are finished then you are in vaikuntha that is moksha once you are allowed inside now you want to come back again punara napunara avartate vaishnava said the also so he is not coming back no no he goes to heaven he comes swarga he comes back yeah from swarga he comes back. from vaikuntha he won't come back from elsewhere he can will come back elsewhere means what they to recognize kailasa but which is below vaikuntha so from kailasa they will come back really all this is they have worked out everything the feathers are also there the charts are there so vaikuntha is below so from there they will come back and then there is another thing called brahmaloka from there you will come back then you have jnanaloka tapoloka mahaloka swatloka aswatloka from all those you will come back but from vaikuntha you will not come back that is the moksha that is how they say so for them the moksha cannot happen while the guy is alive here therefore they do not accept anything called jeevan mukti is ruled out they do not accept the jeevan mukti so mukti only after death so mahatma has said that this doesn't sound well because i am a devotee i want moksha it is the, it is the most pious aspiration that i want moksha now between me seeking moksha and the moksha which is what i am seeking between me and that goal moksha in between there is a death so means what to gain moksha you have to pass through death and this is very auspicious you know if moksha is so pious and so precious the path to moksha cannot go through such an inauspicious thing like death. Death intervenes between me and moksha. This is something unimaginable. So they don't like it. So we don't accept it. So mukti, moksha means jeevan mukti only. You gain the knowledge of the self, you get moksha here and now. If you don't gain the knowledge of the self before death, then there will be no moksha after death death won't give moksha only knowledge of the self gives moksha and there and there will be no knowledge after death it has to happen before only that's why sri krishna says sthitva syam antakale api brahma nirvana mukshati even one second before death you know you are liberated not suddenly after death so jeevan mukta that's why among philosophers this is a big point for vaishnavas they do not accept jeevan mukti for them only videha mukti means vidanta deha he is separated from the body meaning that he died in earth and goes to heaven or the vaikuntha and that is the mukti let us from vedanta this you are the vaikuntha heaven the kingdom of god within you are the vaikuntha there is no other vaikuntha outside you atma vaikuntha sarvam so vaikuntha is also included in atma 
And so you know your fullness and you are liberated. So you already are the Vaikuntha. Therefore, we accept only Jivan Mukti. Next verse. Anamarupam Sakalam Sanmayam Chinmayam Param Kuto Bheda Kuto Bandhaha Kuto Bheda Kuto Bandhaha You see what happens is when you understand that, that Nama Rupa are unreal. They are hollow shells without any content whatsoever. When you see that, when you understand that, it is not easy. You have to work at it. You have to create a value system around it. When you clearly see that Nama Rupa are unreal, then what happens, you know, the reality, which is nameless and shapeless, and that, which is a pure energy of life, that is what reality is. It is pure energy of life, no Namarupa. Suppose you say speech, it is also life. Speech means energy of life. Without life there will be no speech. But the energy of life is already conditioned. And it has a name and form. The form is a speech, name is a speech. S P E E C H is name. So that is not pure energy of life. It is energy of life. Hearing, energy of life. Seeing, energy of life. So energy of life conditioned. Therefore appearing as having a name and form. But when you know that names and forms are unreal. So Vadan Vak, the same pure energy of life, it appears as Vak while it speaks. Otherwise it is pure energy of life. Shravan Shrotram, the pure energy of life alone appears as a Shrotram, while the function Shrotram, you see hearing, is imposed on it. Otherwise, it's a Shrotram is Namarupa, only pure energy of life is real. And so when you realize that Namarupa are unreal, then you are the pure energy of life. And it is already with you. And as you realize the Namarupa unreal, you are immersed in the deep silence of that reality. You are already immersed in it. So it is only the Namarupa which create a screen of separation. They put to temple screen. You see in temples, they you know what they do. If they do it knowingly, there is some beauty in it. But they do it very mechanically in a ritual way. They convert everything into a ritual. Once it becomes a, a mechanical ritual, it loses its, uh, its glory. Some of it is already lost. And so now we are left with a mechanical movement of actions. You see, in temples what they do, they put a screen. They pull the screen. And now there is the screen between you and God. On the other side, you can still see God in a light way. God is very shiny. There is always a lamp there, glowing marvelously. And therefore, through this screen, you should, uh, you will be able to see the God. Okay? So that is what they do in temple. It is pure symbolism. The screen is Namarupa, which is a jnana. So as long as you take the Namarupa real, as real, that is a jnana, so that acts like a screen. Now Sri Ramakrishna talked about this screen. He says, in some temples, the screen is very thick. They overdo. The screen is symbolic, but they overdo. So what they do? They go to the market and purchase a thick screen. Because they think that God should not be seen at the time. 
If you see God at that time, God will get the drishti dosha or whatever. Some funny thing they say. God will be defied. Something will happen to God. Therefore, people should not say at that time. That is how they interpret it. All Buddhas. <laughs> so, therefore, I mean, now this is clear. If you bring this screen, you can see through, well later. No, no. Then for thick screen, you go there. And some people are like that. Totally identified with the body, only Namarupa are the real. Now there is the thick screen. They do not have any glimpse of God. They have to die and go to a good house. Then there is no God. The screen is complete. Then uh, some wise people, so knowing a little better, are uh, that sometimes they don't overdo, they do something. Otherwise, some screen has to be there. At the time, it has to be screened. Bring some screen. So they bring some screen. Now you can see God in later. Thoda. So, this is called the Yokuna. The, uh, the screen is there. So these people, they have a glimpse of God. In their heart, in meditation, they have just a glimpse of God. That fullness, they, they experience that fullness, and they know that fullness which they have experienced is God. They know that. That is the beauty of Vedantika Jaina. So, they have a glimpse of God now. In their heart, the screen is somewhat strong. And in some people, the screen is very light. So light, it is a see-through. And uh, there is this screen, there are Namarupa, everything is Namarupa, but Namarupa is so unreal, it doesn't prevent the seeing of the truth. And these are the Jivan Muktas. They also see Namarupa. Like for them also there is a screen, but the screen doesn't prevent anything. You see through. So that is how the Namarupa works. Therefore, when you see, when you realize that Namarupa is not real, it is a shadow, it is unreal, then the pure energy of life is already with you, which is God. What you do, you are the pure energy of life. You superimpose caste, creed, race, religion, gender, sex, this, that, so many things you superimpose upon that pure energy of life. And you superimpose a mass of body on that pure energy of life. And you identify with the flesh rather than the pure energy of life. This is how you make a present self of yourself. Therefore, the, it is like a flip-flop. You see wrongly, you are born. You see right, you are free. We will do that best tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamivava Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyavanamaha Harihi Om Dhatsadakshikshnaat Panamastu